they are both equally important. To be honest with you, whatever Allah has made easy for you to start with, you start with it. You work on it. I tell you why. Inward and outward, you pay a price for it not being in order. That price is either uh, digestible by some or not. Say for example, um, and I've known this in a lot of cases, I'm going to give you the example even though it may offend some. Say for example, let me word it in, in, in a nice way, right? Say there's a brother who's not really practicing. He's not practicing outwardly, inwardly, he's quiet. And he chooses to get married, for example. And he makes a choice of someone who's similar to him. I tell you what, as time passes, you draw closer to Allah. But the problem is both of you may not draw closer to Allah at the same pace. So you start having a conflict because one is drawing closer to Allah, you know, quicker than the other. So now there's a problem because I'm paying a price of who I was. Not because Allah didn't forgive me or Allah doesn't love me. But it's one of those things. I had a brother who had a huge tattoo and he says, I regret it, but it's permanent and I cannot remove this. What should I do? I said, brother, Allah will forgive you. Allah probably has already forgiven you. But the price you're going to have to pay for what you did is that physically it's going to be there. And Muslims, unfortunately, will look at you and say, Haram, astaghfirullah, haram, brother, what you doing? And so on. So it was a mistake he made in his own jahiliyyah, in his own ignorance. But he came closer to Allah. He's going to have to pay a certain price for it. If you chopped your hand off because it was the trend to only have one hand, you know, human beings are quite silly. That trend might come one day. Uh, so everyone's moving around with one hand. You know, in Cape Town, there was a time when there was a trend that you don't have your front teeth. So they actually used to go and surgically remove them. So if you see a certain age group of people, now they're about 60, 65. And the people from Cape Town who may be here or who may watch this are going to laugh at it because they know what I'm talking about. When they smile at you, the front four teeth are missing. That was a trend. You were like gangster. You know, that's what it was. <laughs> you know, they don't have those teeth. Subhanallah. But later when you understand it's too late, what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to need dentures which are very, very uncomfortable or something else that's expensive. And to remove it was so easy. So sometimes we do things, we pay a price. We pay a price for that. And this is why I say, as you grow older, try to control yourself. Try to have a good reputation. When you sin, sin in private. That's, that's a sign that you are still conscious of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ says, People will still remain upon goodness for as long as they don't openly and proudly commit to sin. Remember that hadith. When your friends know about your sin, I promise you, it's a sign according to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that your consciousness of Allah needs attention. Right? But when you sin in private and you're too embarrassed even for your best friends to know it, it's a sign that you, you, are, you still consider that thing haram and taboo. Why I say this is, like I said, if your friends know what you did and your, your buddies all know, one day you have a little fallout that happens to everyone. And the next thing it's announced on GBC, whatever that is. But on a big broad, broadcasting cooperation, it's just announced. Why? Because there you are. You announced it. People knew about it. So therefore, if you have a weakness, if you've committed a sin, the hadith says, do it in private. Well, the hadith doesn't encourage you to commit sin, but how it's worded is it's the Prophet ﷺ says that people, there is still hope for the people for as long as they don't commit sin openly and proudly. Openly, you're committing the sin. If that's the case, how do you expect the mercy of Allah? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all of us. And you know what? Sometimes we, the price we pay for things we've done in the past is there. I think a lot of us would relate to this. It's not like it's going to go away forever, but it's sometimes it's the mercy of Allah. Maybe Allah is protecting you from something. Perhaps Allah knows something that you don't know. Always believe that in the broader picture, whatever's going on is better for you. In the long run, whatever, whatever seems negative today is actually better for you. May Allah make it easy for us.